I'm here with State Senator Tony Huang. Tony, how are you? I am great, Ryan. Great to see you. You've done some great work. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, and we just saw a budget was just passed in the State Senate, and it was also passed in the State House. Um, the, the Connecticut Governor Dan Malloy has said that he's not going to sign it, but it's not definite. Can you tell us an update of what's going on right now? Well, the budget vote that was passed was unprecedented. To have the House and the Senate engage in a vote that, that included a bipartisan engagement is, is phenomenal. But what more importantly is the people of this state have said no more tax and spend. We need to respect the voters and the taxpayers and put out a budget that is honest, integral to the success moving forward for our state. And the problem I have is the governor says immediately by default that he's going to veto it. But here's what I would offer to the governor. One, the governor has said in a nauseam that he was going to lead with a no tax budget. This budget gives that to him. Number two, he had lamented about the fact that the legislative body had not offered him a budget solution, yeah. that he's had to force himself to put out draconian budgets and executive orders because the legislature has not provided a budget for him. Guess what? We just gave him a bipartisan budget. Yeah. Number three, the fact that we're leading into October 1st where there is going to be devastating impact to our municipalities, to our schools, and it can all be avoided. If the governor supports this budget, signs it, and moves it forward, we can avoid the catastrophic changes and impact to our communities. Governor Malloy, sign the budget. Respect the people that you are representing in the state of Connecticut. Yeah, and one of the things in the budget was uh, dramatic cuts to UConn, millions and millions of dollars. We saw the UConn president come out and say that they might have to close colleges and majors. Uh, do you think that's going to be a problem? Well, uh, without, without a doubt, there are challenges and sacrifices that need to be made everywhere. But what we looked at UConn, along with every other entity that we explored, first to address UConn. We did ask UConn to share some of the cost, to perhaps ask faculty to teach another class, to lighten the staffing additions. Number two, that we would put a stop to having staff and faculty's children yeah. go to school tuition free. Those are incremental savings that we're looking to implement. So the fact is, yes, everybody had to step up. But at the same time, UConn has been one of the largest beneficiaries of our state tax dollars. So as a result, proportionally, they're going to suffer some of the cuts and sacrifices that need to be made. The other thing that's critical is the fact that we address the issue of citizens' elections program. Here's my deal. I've been supportive of the CEP since the onset to yeah. get money, dirty money, out of our elections. But post Citizens versus United, the Democratic legislative body has eroded and, and eviscerated some of the, 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 the thresholds and the challenges to keep money out. So the fact is, the CEP program is not the CEP that was implemented in 2008. And if I had to choose between the, s the elections program money that could go into bumper stickers and lawn signs, which are valuable, I respect, yeah. versus being able to provide Alzheimer's respite care to help those that are waiting on the intellectual disability waiting list, to help those that are infirm to have a better opportunity for a quality of life, I'm willing to make the tough choices. With all due respect, we've had budgets in the past, Ryan, that we not made hard decisions except tax and spend. Now is where we need to make those cuts and really feel the challenging pain. And we made structural changes, labor contract votes, bonding uh, caps, spending yeah. caps. We need to send a message moving forward to the people we represent we hear them loud and clear, and we're going to change how we operate as a state. And there's been a lot of speculation going on about 2018. You, you haven't said you're going to run for your election, but there's people are saying you might run for U.S. Senate, governor, or Congress. Have you decided what you're going to do? Ryan, you do this all the time so wonderfully. You are a very apt newsman. Let's say this. I absolutely love being a state senator. And what yeah. we did in the General Assembly this past week renews my energy, the fact that Everything we do as a state senator in the General Assembly has made a difference. So I'm going to stay focused on the job at hand, and who knows where the future is, but I always believe in the adage, just as you do a great job in what you do, I'm going to keep focusing on do what I do yeah. well to the best of my ability. Yeah, and what are you looking forward uh, to at this Prescott Bush dinner? 
I, I think to meet old friends, to share in the energy of, of the tremendous accomplishment that we made, but also to renew the focus of saying, now is the step. It's only a first step. There is so much more that we need to do. And it is only when we are united with a common goal to try to bring back the greatness of Connecticut. And that's what we should be really focused on. All right, Senator, thank you. Thank you.